Russia is sending old and defenseless T-62 tanks to Ukraine this time. Russia is transferring a batch of T-62M tanks without protection to the war in Ukraine, noted Ukrainian military political observer Alexander Kovalenko. What's especially striking is that the tanks are bare without contact one dynamic protection. I remember when Russian propaganda talked about the resuscitation of the T-62, which has no analogues in the world, making 100,500 reports from the Cheetah 103rd BTRZ, then on the T-62M, which was already experiencing problems due to excess weight, they hung the remote control anywhere they could hang it, he noted. The experts suggested the reason. Are the Contact 1 boxes running out or are tanks needed in the combat zone so quickly that there is no time to bother with improving protection and they are sent as is? The main thing is that it starts? There is something to think about, especially in the context of Putin's peaceful hysterics, says Kovalenko. As the Russo-Ukraine war enters its third year, Russia has lost over 3,000 tanks, forcing it to reintroduce Cold War-era T-62 tanks to the front lines. This means that to keep the front lines properly outfitted, Russia has had to dip into its stockpiles of tanks. One result has been the reintroduction of the Cold War era T-62 tank, albeit loaded with extra armor to compensate for the advances in defense technology. That compensation is necessary. The T-62 was introduced more than 60 years ago. Weighing over 45 tons with the added armor, the T-62 has a power-to-weight ratio of less than 14 horsepower per ton, making it sluggish compared to modern tanks like the T-90M and the American M1A1. The T-62's limited mobility hampers its effectiveness in the fast-paced hit-and-run tactics commonly used in the conflict, leading to increased vulnerability and likely higher tank losses for Russia. Meanwhile, Ukraine's M1s and Leopard 2s are at an advantage, able to dart in and out of these raids, because they have robust transmissions with fast reverse speeds, meaning they don't have to spend tens of seconds turning around in order to escape a kill zone at high speed. Putin's peace conditions are Hitler-like. He demands territory from Ukraine comparable to Israel. Kremlin ruler Putin, in his peace proposal, demanded that Ukraine give up territory comparable to that of North Macedonia, Slovenia or Israel. Expert of German build media outlet Julian Rupka writes about this. According to him, if Ukraine agreed to Moscow's conditions, it would give it a territory of 26,000 square kilometers, which could take the Russian army decades to capture. He calls it unconditional surrender. Putin's words are more a cry of despair than a proposal that should be taken seriously. He knows that Ukraine will not be able to agree to this, since there is no reason to assume that it will lose the required territory in the fighting in the coming months and years. Rupka added, Putin said that he had a real peace proposal for Ukraine. It is that the Ukrainians must completely withdraw troops from the Donetsk, Lugansk, Zaporozhye and Kherson regions. Moscow also continues to insist on the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine, demanding that the country abandon its aspirations to join NATO. Another condition is the lifting of all sanctions against Russia. If the peace proposal is refused, Putin added, Moscow's future demands will be different. President Vladimir Zelensky called Putin's words an ultimatum, which is no different from his previous statements. He will not stop, he said, comparing Putin's peace conditions to ultimatums given by German dictator Adolf Hitler in the lead-up to World War III. It is the same thing that Hitler used to do. This is why we should not trust these messages, Zelensky added. Ukraine's foreign ministry called Putin's plan manipulative, absurd, and designed to mislead the international community, undermine diplomatic efforts aimed at achieving a just peace, and split the unity of the world majority around the goals and principles of the UN Charter. Putin's comments contrast starkly with his Ukrainian counterpart's peace plan. Volodymyr Zelensky's 10-point proposal, outlined in November 2022, demands the restoration of the country's territorial integrity under the UN Charter. He has also insisted that Ukraine regain the peninsula of Crimea, which Russia annexed illegally before the current war in February 2014. Russia and NATO are drifting towards a major war 
the alliance may deploy its army in Ukraine. Is it possible that NATO forces could become directly involved in the military conflict between Russia and Ukraine? Until recently, such a question seemed very hypothetical, given the high risks of the escalation of the military confrontation between the US-led bloc and Russia into a large-scale armed conflict. But this scenario should be taken seriously now. Ivan Timofeev, program director of the Valdai Club of Russia, said this. According to him, the direct participation of individual NATO countries or the entire bloc in hostilities could gradually spiral out of control. Crossing red lines can lead to the belief that there will be no consequences for engaging in war. The result of such movements can manifest itself at an unexpected moment and lead to a much more dangerous situation than the current one. Strictly speaking, NATO countries have long been involved in the conflict. This takes several forms. First, Western countries provide Kiev with substantial financial and military assistance, including increasingly advanced and destructive weapons systems. Second, Ukraine receives extensive Western support in the form of intelligence, including technical data from satellites, radars, reconnaissance aircraft, etc. Third, military specialists who are citizens of NATO countries are involved in combat operations. For Kiev's Western partners, the sluggish pace of the conflict allows them to gradually improve the quality of their support for Ukraine. A significant escalation factor that would amplify the risk of a direct clash between Russia and NATO could be the appearance of military contingents from bloc members on the territory of Ukraine. The projects of such a scenario has already been mentioned by some Western politicians, although their view has not been supported by the US and isn't an official NATO position. A number of the bloc's leaders have distanced themselves from supporting the idea of sending troops to Ukraine. Intervention can take a number of forms. It may involve the use of infrastructure, including airfields of NATO countries. It could mean the mass deployment of certain communications and engineering units and air defense systems while avoiding their presence on the front line.